Hello everyone, welcome back. My topic for this week is linear transformations and geometry. So last week we talked about what it means for a function, we also call it a map, to be linear. So a function which takes p real inputs and returns q real outputs is called linear if whenever I add together the inputs, I wind up adding together the outputs. And whenever I multiply the input by a scalar, I multiply the output by the same scalar. That's the abstract definition of what it means to be linear. And we also learned concretely that linear functions are exactly the functions where we multiply by some matrix. To give a linear function with p inputs and q outputs, we multiply by a q by p matrix. So last time we used examples of linear functions coming from um, things like we had a, a story about a toy factory where the inputs to our function were what toys we wanted to make and the outputs were what raw materials we would need to purchase to do that. Today I want to talk about linear maps that come from geometry. So here is a picture. And here is the same picture after I apply a linear map from two-dimensional space to two-dimensional space. You can see a few things geometrically in this example. The parallel lines, like this one, this one, and this one, stay parallel in the output. So here are the images of those lines in the output. The proportional distances along the same line stay the same. So this distance is half as far as this distance. And those distances have been stretched out to twice as far here and twice as far here. On the other hand, right angles don't stay right angles. And the ratios between vectors in different directions don't stay the same. So this is sort of what a pretty generic linear map looks like. So I haven't told you what the coordinates on the left-hand page are. Let's decide that the zero, zero point is the lower left-hand window of the bell tower. So zero, zero is at the tails of these two arrows. And I'll take my blue arrow to be the arrow one zero and my maze arrow to be the arrow zero one. So one zero is over here. Whoops. And zero one is up here. Okay. And let's save it under the new linear map. The vector which used to be one zero is mapped to position one and a half zero point five. So let's say that this image vector is now in position one point five zero point five. And let's say that the maze vector is mapped to new position. 0 0.4, 0 0.8, which are, and those are actually, in fact, the, uh, the coordinates I use to make this image. So here's a question for you. Where, what are the coordinates of the green vector and where is it mapped to? And let me pause, you can all pause your video and see what answer you come up with. Okay, so 
if you count windows on the bell tower, you can see that the green arrow is two times the blue arrow, one, two, plus five times the maze arrow, one, two, three, four, five. So green equals two times blue plus five times maze. <clears throat> and you can see that that is still true over in the output picture. If I go over to this green arrow, it is two copies of the blue arrow plus one, two, three, four, five copies of the maze arrow. And that's because this map is linear. So when we apply a linear function to the equation green equal, so f of two times blue plus five times maze is going to equal two times f of blue plus five times f of maze. That's what it means to be linear. And so the answer to the, um, to the first question, what are the coordinates of the green vector? The green vector on the left-hand side is at two comma five, and the green vector on the right-hand side is at two times 1.5 comma 0 0.5, plus five times 0 0.4, 0 0.8, which is uh, five comma five, I believe. Okay, I'm gonna pause, give you all a chance to absorb that, and then I'm gonna move on. So here's another question that we can ask, and I'll answer this a few slides later. What is the matrix of this linear map? So you, you all pause your video, write down what you think the answer is. I'll talk about generalities and we'll come to the answer soon. So in general, if we have some linear map, here's a linear map that takes five inputs and three outputs, and we wanna know what are the entries in the matrix of the linear map, the columns of this matrix are going to be the images of the coordinate vectors. So for example, if I take this matrix and I multiply it by one, zero, 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 I'm going to go across this row and down this column in order to compute that the top entry of the output will be A11. And then I'm gonna go across the next row and down the same column to compute that the next entry of the output will be A12 and so forth. And so A, so the matrix A times the vector one, zero, 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 zero is going to be this first column. And similarly, the matrix A times the vector zero, one, zero, zero, zero is going to be the second column and so forth. So let's apply that to the question I asked a moment ago. The first column, the blue, the first coordinate vector the blue arrow one zero got mapped to 1.50.5, which means that 1.50.5 is going to be the first column of this matrix. 
And the second coordinate vector 0, 1 got mapped to 0 0.4, 0 0.8. That means that's going to be the second column of this matrix. Okay. That's what I wanted to say about thinking about linear maps and geometry in general. So just to repeat myself, linear maps preserve linear relations between vectors. If one vector is three times another, then the images of those vectors, one will be three times the other. If one vector is a sum of two other vectors, then the image of that vector will be the sum of the images of the other vectors. So that's why we saw that the green arrow was two times the blue arrow plus five times the maze arrow. And after I applied the linear map, the, green arrow, the image of the green arrow was still two times the image of the blue arrow plus five times the image of the maze arrow. On the other hand, linear maps do not preserve lengths and they do not preserve angles. So that's why I'm going to stop. And then if you want to know the matrix of a linear map, one of the easiest ways to think about it is to look at what it does to the coordinate vectors, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, et cetera. I'm going to stop this lecture here. And then the next lecture is going to be just a bunch of specific linear maps that often show up in geometry problems. I'm not really sure I'm going to do a better job of that lecture than your textbook does. You might just like to read the textbook, but we'll see what I can do as well. See you then.